Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. This week's tutorial is a Balkan anemone done in colored pencil with powder blender. I have a list of the colors and materials I used for this painting available on Patreon for free. I'll have a card pop up with the link. And if you'd like to watch longer videos, $5 a month will get you access to all my longer videos with voiceovers. This was my second time working with powder blender, and I am still learning. This piece is done on the UART 400 so I could test out the rougher grit. I'm not sure I like it, but I may have to work on it some more to see if I do or not. I'm going to speed through the background for this first part as it, is, as it is repetitive and boring, but I will talk you through as much of the process as I can for the whole picture. I began by blocking in the background with Delft Blue followed by Black. The background required many layers of black mixed with the Delft Blue and Blue Violet to get the depth that I wanted. I blocked in the background first before adding in the shadows and highlights of the flower. I'm going through here with my dark sepia to sharpen up some of my edges and to clean up some of the shadows. Given the imprecision of the soft tool that I use to block in my shadows, I need to go through with both the white and the dark sepia to sort of clean things up a little bit. And it's really easy to do with this medium. Once I've got the texture fixative down, I have plenty of tooth to the paper to go through and have that white stand out or have the sepia darken things up where I need it to be. So I'm going through and I'm going to lightly blend this out. If you notice I'm using the smaller soft tool and that's because I'm working in smaller areas and I want to have more detailed blending here. After fixing with the textured fixative, I blocked in the flower with a flat blue to cover the shading. It will also take many layers of the blue to give the flower depth of color. So I'm just going to go through and carefully blend all this out. I'm being very gentle that I blend and not remove pigment at this point. It's very easy to remove too much and then you've lost all of that layering that you've just put down. So I try to use a very light hand and just graze the surface as lightly as possible to get a smooth blending without removing too much pigment. I'm going through here right now with the black to tighten up my edges on my petals. I want to make sure that all my edges are sharp so it really stands out from that background. I really do not want to have blurry or fuzzy edges on this flower. I do need to be careful that if I'm adding some around the flower that I eventually go back through and add another layer to the entire background so I don't end up with a dark halo around my flower. So I'm just trying to get a nice soft transition between the flower and the background. And I'll go through with the white at this point to also bring out some of the edges on the petals. So that'll help with some of the highlights as well. The more layers I add, the brighter everything will be.
After blocking in several layers, I moved on to blocking in the center. I worked on the center of the flower, blocking in all the yellow and green and flat colors. It doesn't matter if I block in the dark tone or the light tone, because after I spray down the layer, I can easily add the light over the dark or the dark over the light. I'm still going through here and I'm defining my edges with the blue. I also go back in with the yellow to make sure I got a good layer of color all the way through the whole center. I want to make sure that the whole paper is covered. I don't want to have any little white spots showing through because they'll really show through after. So I want to make sure I get all that covered up with some pigment. Since I am sitting so close to the picture, of course I can see the stamens, but standing back from it, I had noticed that they were a little harder to make out, so I went back and darkened up the contrast to create more separation. I could also have taken a picture and played with the contrast and saturation settings to see if there was improvement that I should further do. After putting all that work into the center, I'm now going through and touching up all of my petals again. So I'm going through with the light phthalo blue, and I'm adding a layer of this blue to where all of my highlights are going to be. Then I'll take my middle phthalo blue, and I'll go through where most of my dark shadows are going to be. And then I'll smudge the two, shadow, the two colors together, either with the dark or the light phthalo, just rubbing them into each other, and that'll help create a soft transition between the colors. I'll go through with the phthalo blue, which is the darkest, and I'll add the darkest shadows from there. And either I will use the phthalo blue by itself, or I'll add the dark phthalo blue with the dark sepia to get a very dark shadow. As you can see, the colors are standing out a lot more now that I'm adding the three different blues. I've got more definition, I've got more shadow, I've got more shape to the petals.
I'm adding another layer of the blue violet as well as another layer of black to the background to bring it back up to full saturation. This will get it as dark as I need it to be. I'm going to rush through this part a little bit faster since it's just the background again and there's nothing nothing really important to see. I'm being careful to go around my edges to keep them sharp. Other than that, it's just blocking in the background again. Here I took my black pencil and I made sure it was super sharp and I went through and I drew in some very faint lines just to give the appearance of veining in the leaves. And then went back over the stem with the Kaput Mortem and the Kaput Mortem Violet and a little bit of white and black just to bring out the highlights and the, the texture and the, the roundness of the stem here. And that is it for this picture. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. I have new speed drawings go up every Monday and new speed tutorials every Wednesday. Please subscribe so you can stay informed of new videos. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. Thanks for watching.